there's got to be something out there that is possibly shepherding the orbits into a particular direction. There might actually be a ninth planet in our solar system. There has to be something outside that might be guiding the orbits in a certain way. It's possible that our solar system has a ninth world. Our sun has nine planets, but Pluto is not one of them. NASA has made an amazing find in the vastness of our solar system. They have found a ninth planet that is orbiting beyond Neptune and Pluto. On the other hand, this astronomical finding has a dark side that has puzzled scientists and captivated the public. Planet Nine is experiencing a strange event that has never been seen before in our area of space. Does it look like proof of alien interference, a collision in space, or something else we don't understand? We're going to talk about how NASA found a ninth planet in our solar system, but something is off. Our world, Earth, is one of eight planets that orbit around the Sun, which is a very large and very hot star. Astronomers who study the Sun and planets have known for a very long time that these planets move across the sky in a steady pattern. Based on what they can see, some are moving forward faster than others, and some even look like they are going backward. But that's where we're getting off track. Let's look at how the Sun and planets formed. The solar nebula, a huge cloud of gas and dust, began to form about 4.6 billion years ago. It was this cloud that made the early solar system possible. It may have been a nearby supernova that caused the nebula to fall under its own weight and start spinning. Because of the principle of conservation of angular momentum, a protostar formed at the center of the spinning cloud. It got hotter and denser over time. The accretion process led tiny bits of dust to hit each other and group together to form planetesimals, which are bigger objects. As they continued to crash into each other and merge, the surrounding matter started to stick together. This is how protoplanets were made. As they continued to take in more matter, they grew bigger and heavier. At the same time, the sun got bigger and brighter during this time. It became the most powerful object in the solar system after it surpassed the mass of all the planets, asteroids, and comets put together. Denser materials fell to the cores of the protoplanets while lighter materials rose to the tops. As the protoplanets continued to gather material, their cores became hotter and more differentiated. Earth and other planets with rocky surfaces were made in part by this process, which we will talk about in a bit. The sun's strong rays and solar wind blew away the last of the gas and dust into space. Because of the lower temperatures there, gas and ice could stay gaseous, which is how gas giants like Saturn and Jupiter formed. The cold worlds Neptune and Uranus got their atmospheres and icy cores after that. The planets in our solar system are all different, but there are some things they have in common. In this case, each planet has a north and a south pole. These points are at the ends of the world and in the middle of it. The big asteroid belt, which goes from Jupiter to Mars, is another thing that sets our solar system apart from the outer solar system. Most people think of the Sun, planets, and Earth when they think of our solar system. But there are many other types of bodies in the ring around the Sun, such as comets, meteors, asteroids, moons, and some moons have their own moons, space dust, and the controversial dwarf planets. When scientists found a large piece of rock and ice in 2005, they decided to name it Eris. The fact that it was farther from the Sun and bigger than Pluto made people think about what a planet really is. Do you think Eris was the 10th planet in the solar system? What's the difference between Pluto and Eris if not? In 2006, the International Astronomical Union, IAU, said that an object had to directly orbit the Sun in order to be considered a planet. This means that the Moon doesn't count because it orbits Earth, not the Sun. It also had to be big enough that its own gravity made it spherical, and it had to have cleared its neighborhood, which means that it was the most important object in its orbit. This is because Pluto was demoted from the ninth planet to a dwarf planet, where it now lives with Eris, Makemake, Ceres, Haumea, and Orcus. Since Pluto was kicked out of the club, there have been hints that there might be one more planet in the solar system. This would bring the total number of known planets back up to nine, with a possible Planet Nine hiding on the edge of our solar system. This world has been hard to find so far, but a new study has found the exact spot where it should be. The fact that Planet Nine's gravity pulls on other objects shows that it exists. Assuming the planet is real, its pull on other celestial bodies will change their paths. By doing some easy math, you can find out where a planet's gravitational pull comes from. 
John Couch Adams and Urban Leverrier were the first astronomers to notice that Uranus seemed to be being pulled by an invisible planet. This led to the finding of Neptune. It doesn't matter how much gravity we have pulling on Planet 9. We do see a strange grouping of very small icy objects in the outer parts of the solar system. These are called Kuiper Belt Objects. KBOs. If there were no planets in the Kuiper Belt, the KBOs' paths would look like they were strewn around randomly in the orbital plane of the Sun. But it's actually the other way around. A lot of KBO circles tend to group together. That this is just a matter of chance is possible, but not likely. In 2016, the writers used the statistical distribution of KBOs to find that the clustering was caused by an outer planet that had not been found yet. They think it weighs about five Earths and is about ten times farther away from the Sun than Neptune. The story even gave an estimate of a large part of the sky that the planet might be in. But the searches didn't turn up anything. For some, this led them to believe that Planet Nine doesn't exist. Planets may not always be present when their paths are strange. That's what Planet Vulcan will say. Because some people didn't like the first work, this new study goes back and looks at it again. Many people don't like how easy it is to find things in the outer solar system, which forces us to look in awkward places. The fact that we saw a clustering effect could just be due to skewed data. The writers say that the clustering is still statistically significant, even though observational bias was taken into account. The chance that it's just a coincidence is very small. By recalculating the likely orbit of Planet 9, scientists are better able to target it. The study's interesting new orbit brings Planet 9 closer to the Sun than previous predictions. Some people have even said that Planet 9 is real but we will never be able to see it because it is a primitive black hole. Could it not even be a planet? Could it be the first black hole? Our methods for studying the sky are always getting better, but there are still a lot of small worlds in the outer solar system that we haven't found yet. The ninth planet in our solar system is thought to be much bigger than Earth. It has a mass of 5 to 10 Earth masses and goes around the Sun 400 to 800 astronomical units away on average. Earth's orbit around the Sun is about one astronomical unit away, which is 10 to 20 times farther than Pluto's orbit. Nine planets would take between 10,000 and 20,000 years to go around the Sun once. The idea of a big world following the Sun from so far away is very interesting. Studies of other star systems show that there are a lot of exoplanets with masses between those of Earth and Neptune. It's strange that our solar system doesn't have a world with this mass range. But if Planet Nine is real, it would be a huge, important finding that would change the way we think about the system of planets that orbit our Sun. It goes without saying that a planet with a path so off would be very hard to find. Still, Experts keep looking through infrared surveys in the hopes of seeing something far away moving across the sky. There isn't much direct proof that Planet Nine exists, other than the fact that something in the outer solar system is pulling on it. The object should be giving off infrared radiation if it is out there. This type of radiation comes from the planet's energy leak since the beginning of time. Now we get to the black hole idea. In a new study, astronomers Jacob Schultz from Durham University and James Unwin from the University of Illinois at Chicago presented a different idea. They said that the gravitational oddities in the farthest reaches of the solar system are not caused by planets at all. Instead, they said that there was a primordial black hole, which is an idea that has caused some talk. The rest of the solar system is not in danger from this type of black hole because it is too small but it would have a big effect in the farthest parts of our solar system. We only know Planet Nine exists because of its effects on trans-Neptunian objects, TNOs. After all, black holes are the things with the strongest gravitational pull in the universe. This type of black hole is thought to have formed right after the Big Bang. It is called a primordial black hole. Due to changes in density, black holes with different masses would have formed very quickly in the early universe. After being spread out in space, these long-gone things would have slowly disappeared over time thanks to Hawking radiation, with smaller ones showing up first. Even though there is strong, indirect proof that they exist, no one has actually seen a primordial black hole. This is true even though many models of how the universe evolved say they exist. Think about microlensing events which happen when a large object quickly makes stars brighter as it passes in front of them because of the way space-time curves and acts as a lens. 
These events suggest that there may be a group of very small black holes in the universe that can only be found by measuring the way their gravity bends spacetime. With a new view of the TNO anomalies, Schultz and Unwin predicted what would happen if there was a very elliptical black hole surrounding the Sun with a mass of 5 to 10 Earth masses. In fact, their models show that if a primordial black hole had a mass in this range, the population of TNOs would also have similar orbital disturbances. This may also explain why there isn't much proof for Planet 9. A primordial black hole wouldn't send out either a visual or infrared signal. In fact, a black hole in the area might be killing dying matter and releasing different kinds of radiation by pulling a cloud of dark matter with it. After seeing these results, the researchers want to do more experiments to find moving sources of high-energy cosmic rays like X-rays, gamma rays, and other types of radiation. Putting in a made-up planet instead of a made-up black hole type could make the Planet 9 puzzle more difficult than it needs to be. But this is an interesting line of study. Could the gravity pull we see in the outer solar system be caused by a black hole? Of course. We only know that there is a big mass or something out there, but we don't know what it is. Some people find comfort in end-of-the-world statements, even though most people listen to them with an open mind. A lot of common beliefs about the end of the world are based on bad science and no proof at all. Take the Nibiru disaster as an example of one of the worst end-of-the-world scenarios. Most followers say that Nibiru is a strange planet that goes around the sun and comes back to its original path every 3,600 Earth years. According to science fiction, Nibiru, also known as Planet X or Planet 9, is a huge planet that is supposedly heading straight for Earth. If that doesn't happen, it's said to start a chain reaction of natural disasters that will destroy humanity. The book The Twelfth Planet by Zechariah Sitchin, which came out in 1976, made people aware of Nibiru. We should note that Sitchin himself didn't think Nibiru was a threat to people right away. Instead, he believed it had something to do with how our species came to be. Yes, there is a lot to understand here. Sitchin was a journalist and a scholar of Sumerian cuneiform, which was used to write on clay tablets in Mesopotamia and Persia. He eventually came to believe that Homo sapiens are not fully the result of natural selection. He says that the first humans were bioengineered by aliens called the Anunnaki, who used to live in southeastern Africa. However, his interpretations of old Mesopotamian texts and inscriptions are questionable. Sitchin said that these aliens came from Nibiru, a planet that hasn't been found yet, but that he said would circle Earth every 3,600 years and then disappear into space. Things were bound to go wrong with Nibiru and make it a scary place. Since the mid-1990s, the made-up planet Nibiru has been a part of many doomsday and conspiracy ideas. One psychic even said that Nibiru would pass Earth in 2003 and cause a lot of trouble along the way. It was clear that this would not happen, but Nibiru kept making news. In 2017, some Christian conservatives said that Nibiru or a similar object was coming very close and would soon bring about the end of the world. This was a belief shared by many people who believed in the false 2012 end of the world. Nibiru is said to go around the sun every 3,600 years. At first look, this makes sense since the orbit of the real minor planet Sedna takes an amazing 11,400 Earth years. Sedna, on the other hand, stays far away from the sun. Astronomers and planetary scientists use astronomical units to figure out how far away things are in the world. There are about 93 million miles between Earth and the Sun, which is equal to one astronomical unit. When Sedna hits its apogee, it will be 976 astronomical units from the Sun. This puts it in the outer solar system, a long way from Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto. Nibiru, the much maligned Planet 9, on the other hand, is thought to regularly visit the inner solar system, which is home to Mercury, Venus, Earth, and Mars. These factors helped figure out that Nibiru's farthest point in its orbit would be about 469 astronomical units from the Sun. In order to stay on schedule, Nibiru would have to journey the whole distance from Earth to this very faraway place and back again in 3,600 years. Instead of a circle, the planet would need an orbit that is ridiculously narrow and almost stick-shaped. Nibiru would also be moving at a very fast 26.1 miles per second as it went by Earth. While traveling at such a fast speed in an unstable orbit, this is clearly not good news because the planet could be thrown out of the solar system. 
Okay, so what would happen if Nibiru kept going around the sun in its strange present path? By now we would have seen clear signs of that. Scientists at NASA's Planetary Science Division say that it was in 1992 that astronomers searching the sky for faint objects beyond Neptune found the Kuiper Belt. This belt is thought to hold hundreds of thousands of other objects, as well as smaller objects, up to a trillion faraway comets and three dwarf planets, Haumea, Makemake, and Eris. What other possible planets might be out there in our solar system that we don't know about? Astronomers thought there might be a big planet in the area long before Neptune was found in 1846. This was because scientists had seen that Uranus, which was seen for the first time in 1781, kept moving away from where it was supposed to be in its orbit. It was thought by mathematicians that this might be because of an effect from a close planet, and it turned out that they were right. The planet that no one knew about turned out to be Neptune, a gas giant. In the same way, if Nibiru existed, it would be clear how it would affect the other worlds in our solar system. There would also be a much stronger pull from Nibiru if it were a big planet, as many believers in the supernatural say it is. Right now, all the planet's paths around the Sun, from Venus to Neptune, are mostly on the same plane, with only a few degrees of difference. David Morrison, a planetary scientist, has shown that if a body like Nibiru sped past Earth every 3,600 years, it would have pushed at least some of these planets far from the plane of their orbits, making their tracks very badly off-center. Last but not least, there is the issue of direct observation, or rather the lack of it. Astronomers would have seen Nibiru coming years before it got to Earth. There were a few months before the planet got lost, it would have been brighter than some stars we can see now. But the promised planet has never been seen, not even by amateur astronomers and there is no scientific proof that it ever will be. Anyway, scientists still don't know exactly where Planet 9 is, so it might be a while before someone can look at it through a telescope. Glad you watched another Voyager episode. Click the video on your screen to see more amazing space movies while you're still here.